Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about the development length in beams. Always we have a doubt that why we have to provide the development length into the column. What is the reason behind that and how to calculate this development length for different diameter of the bars. So without further delay, let's begin now. So first thing first, let me show you the development length of the beam reinforcement. If you take the section, longitudinal section of the beam, so this is the main bar which is running throughout the beam. So this beam reinforcement needs to be bent like this into the column. So from this face of the column, we have to measure the development length till here. From this face of the column till this end. So if you take this bar from here till here this is the development length this is for the top bar similarly if you take the bottom bar this is the development length from the face of the column till here now we know what is development length in beams next let's look into why do we need to provide the development length in beams it ensures a secure bond and it prevents slippage it provides effective stress transfer and it enhances the structural integrity so these are the major reasons behind the development length. This development length creates a secure bond between the reinforcement and the surrounding concrete. If we don't provide the development length, what happens when the load is applied on the beam? It tend to pull the bar. If we don't provide the development length, the reinforcement simply slip out of the concrete before the concrete reaches its full capacity. So this would lead to a sudden failure or a catastrophic failure of the beam. So it is a, always a good practice to provide the proper development length like this. So this is wrong. We are not supposed to detail the beam like this. So always we have to make sure that we are providing a proper development length for the beam reinforcement. This development length also helps to transfer the stresses effectively. For example, when the beam is loaded, the concrete will take up the compressive forces that is pushing forces and the reinforcement will take up the tensile forces that is pulling forces. So these stresses get transferred from steel to concrete by using this development length. So if we don't provide the development length, these stress transfer will not happen properly. This could lead to the cracking or spalling of concrete around the reinforcement. So it affects the overall strength and structural integrity of the beam. So this development length allows the beam to behave as a composite unit and achieve its desired load carrying capacity. So effective stress transfer and the structural integrity also maintained by providing this development length in beams. Next let's see how to calculate the development length in beams. The formula is given in IS 456-2000, class number 26.2.1. The formula is LD is equal to phi times sigma S upon 4 tau BD. So here phi is the nominal diameter of the bar and sigma S is the stress in bar at the section considered at design load. Tau BD is the design bond stress which is given in the table 26.2.1.1. So we need to know the sigma s that is stress in bar that is given in sp16 if you look into the code sp16 the same formula is given here sigma s is the stress in the bar the value of the development length corresponding to a stress of 0.87 fy in the reinforcement so this stress in the bar needs to be calculated by using 0.87 fy let's look into the table design bond stress in limit state method for plying bars in tension. So the table represents the values of plying bars in tension. Different grades of concrete and the design bond stress are given. So what we have to do here is if we have a deformed bars, we have to increase the values by 60%. For deformed bars, these values shall be increased by 60%. Similarly, this is for tension, right? For bars in compression, the values of bond stress bars in tension shall be increased by 25%. So, for 
compression we have to increase these values by 25 percent and then again for deformed bars we need to increase by 60 percent let me show you the values so here we have the values for deformed bars in tension so this is increased by 60 percent these values are increased by 60 percent next let's look into the values for compression so for plain bars first we have to increase these values by 25 percent this is increased value of 25 percent and again we have to use these values and increase by 60 percent now let's calculate the development length in tension the grade of concrete is m25 and grade of steel is fe 415 so we have to calculate the stress 0.87 fy so that comes around 361.05 newton per mm square tau bd we need to calculate that is as per the table we need to consider if you take it for m25 concrete in tension that is 2.24 for m25 grade the value is 2.24 so we have all the values if you calculate the development length we get 40.295 dia next let's see how do we calculate the development length in compression the same way we have the stress in bar and then tau bd we need to take from the table so for deformed bars we need to take the tau bd value for m25 grade concrete it is 2.8 so if we calculate ld is 32.23 dia now let me show you how we can do the calculation over here so we know for tension we have calculated the development length as 40.295 dia so here the main reinforcement this bar is 16 mm dia bar you can see 2t16 two number of 16 mm dia bar 40.295 multiplied by 16 we get 644.72 so for this we can say 645 mm so this is the development length it is 645 mm similarly for compression it is 32.23 dia 32.23 multiplied by again this bar is also 16 mm dia bar multiplied by 16 we get 515.68 515 so in this way you have to calculate the development length in beams so friends i hope you all like the video please do comment in the comment box if you really like the content hit the like button and also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.